Hello everyone, welcome to the Sane Asylum. <sighs> and in this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most important, incredible, vital music scenes to ever come out of any country really and I'm going to be talking about Cosmischer music Cosmischer Cosmischer is German for cosmic music and you're probably thinking what is Cosmischer music what is it and why did it start how did it start well I suppose you have to go back about 20, 30 years earlier before the Cosmos scene started. So, so give you a little history lesson. So just in case you've been living under a rock, post-war Germany. So 1945, Germany lost the Second World War. Just country was in absolute ruins, absolute ruins, and of course, it was divided. The country was divided. So, West Germany was, you know, the Western capitalist, you know, you know, France, Britain, America, and of course, East Germany. Rush, Russian communism. Hey, comrades, we go to we are Russian comrades. Comrades, hey, comrades. You know, so Germany was divided, and of course Berlin was, you know, completely, completely divided. You know, with all with the French zone, American zone, and the British zone. You know, and we had the the Berlin blockade of forty eight. That was bad, and of course the Berlin Wall in nineteen sixty one. So Germany was, you know, I mean, they were getting punished. I mean, compared to the First World War, you know that that, that was that was nothing. Well, I'm not. Uh, not, I'm not saying it was, wasn't nothing, but because they because they were punished after the First World War as well, very very harshly. But the sec after the Second World War, I mean, just completely, completely, you know, completely punished. You know, I, I can't imagine living living in living in East Berlin with with the with the Russian secret police and 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 the the paranoia and the fear and ugh, I can't I can't imagine it. So, so a lot of so a lot of the German uh, culture was well, there wasn't much uh, German culture at all. I mean, a lot of the the music that the Germans were listening to, particularly in the late sixties, was of course, I mean, of course, the Beatles. Play, play Germany in their in their early careers as the Silver Beatles, you know, a lot of British um, and American garage rock was was a lot of their entertainment. I mean, they did have a German pop German pop scene called Schleiger, but it, it was just it was like really like very dreary. Fucking boring spine and going, I'm the dinosaur, the dinosaur, the day, everything's so happy, all the day, the day. You know, it was like so inoffensive, you know, your, your grandparents could dance to it, you know, it was a lot, it was, wasn't much culture for them, you know, I mean, and they couldn't really go and they couldn't really look back to the Third Rikers culture, absolutely not. So it was a lot. It was there was a lot of British influence, and and of course a lot of the country was 
run by ex-Nazi officials. You know, it was just, oh, just really, just really bad for them, the Germans, really bad. You know, very, very bad, particularly in 1968 with the, with the riots, you know. And they had riots in France as well, you know. It was just a lot of, a lot of unrest. You know, there was a lot of unrest. And, and then of course... You know, the baby, the baby boom scene. You know, the baby boomers between... Baby boomers is... Um, well, it's like... It's like... Um, between... People born between 46 and 64. Baby boomers. The baby boomers, you know, a lot of the... Well, a lot of the German students, and they want to change. They fucking wanted change. They didn't want fucking former na Nazi officials fucking running the country. And there was no... Like, and like I said, there was no culture for them. A lot of the influences were British and American. I mean, the Monks, a great fucking band. Amer um, American G GIs. American GIs stationed in Germany singing songs about Vietnam. Just absolutely brilliant, brilliant band. In a lot of ways, they could arg arguably be one of the first punk bands, really. To be honest, I, I just love their manic, energetic, organ-driven sound. It's just absolutely brilliant. And one of their songs, I Hate You, was used in The Big Lebowski. You know, just absolutely brilliant band. Black Moon Time. Great, great album. Absolutely great, great album. You know, my name's Gary. Uh, why you kill all those kids at Vietnam? My brother died in Vietnam. Just absolutely brilliant. Singing songs about Vietnam and cuckoo. Someone stole my cuckoo. I want to know who, who. Did you take my cuckoo? And you think, fucking hell. Fucking Bonkers, and he would, and he would dress like monks as well and cut the middle of their head. Bizarre, absolutely bizarre. But great, 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 great band. But at the same time, they were they were American. So, so like I said, a lot of the like a lot of the bands that came. A lot of the June bands that came in the late sixties, they were like, they were like we're not we're gonna distance ourselves from any influence from British and American music and form our own identity. Form our own identity that 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 is that it, that that will be our culture. And boy the bands that came from that, from Cosmosher, from the Cosmosher scene, just gave us such incredible, mind-blowing music. Absolutely incredible. You know, incredible. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, so that was a history lesson with Simph John. <laughs> Fuck, you know, imagine me as a history teacher. Fuck, you know. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at talking about a couple of the bands from that scene. So, the first band we're going to be looking at is Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream. What can we say about Tangerine Dream? Tangerine Dream are... Uh, their sound is very, 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 very hypnotic. You sort of get, you sort of go into a trance and you sort of get lost in the synthesizers. You just really, really, really get lost. You know, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine taking LSD. I, and listen to Tangerine G, I mean, fucking hell. It's, 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 it's enriching. Just listen to it sober. 
It's just absolutely, absolutely incredible. You know, pretty much, you know, Brian Eno likes to say, you know, I invented ambient music, but Tangerine Dream invented ambient music, but Brian Eno just gave it a, t just gave it a name. You know, he just, he just gave it a name, you know, Incre it's just incredible. You know, I remember listening to Tangerine Dream's Fedora and I was just absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. And they were very, they were very popular in Britain. Tangerine Dream. I mean, a lot, a lot of their albums between 74 and when they were on Virgin Records, they, 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 they would hit the top 20. They would, they would hit the top 20 in, in the album charts. They just, you know, Edgar Frost, just absolutely incredible, you know, and in many, and in many ways, they sort of predated sequencing as well, in a way. You know, we take we take sequencing for granted now in synthesizers, but back then, you know, you'd build your own synthesizers, you would tune in, you know, you tune your he said Edgar Frank said you chew it you you would tune in your synthesizer for 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 hours. Absolute hours, you know? Just absolutely incredible. And and in, and in many ways it's sort to me it's sort of like church music to me. You know, uh Tangerine Dreams uh, music. It's sort to me it's sort of like it's sort of it's sort of like church music I would like to hear in a church, you know. Don't get me wrong; church music is is all right, and, all right, and dandy, right. But to me, to listen to Tangerine Dream was in a church, playing in a church. It, 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 I don't know; it would just sound. It's, it's they have that sort of sound for like for like old archi architecture buildings. And I think I did read they did play a church, a concert somewhere, one of the cathedrals in in Britain. I'm sure I read that somewhere. So it does. It does have that church sort of feel to the to their sound, just incredible. And 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 the way they play the the way they play the synthesizer for minutes, and minutes, and minutes, and minutes, and minutes. You know, because their songs are fucking long. You know, sort of like prog rock length. You know, really long. I mean, the way they play for for such a long time, it it it, it have it would have that hypnotic. It has that hypnotic. Sequence of feel, incredible exit, just brilliant, brilliant albums and great songs in here. Um, remote viewing, great, great, great bloody song, great, fantastic, fantastic. White Eagle, brilliant, brilliant. Underwater, underwater sunlight, brilliant, brilliant. And live is just incredible. Live, brilliant, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, brilliant live, incredible. And that's Edgar Froese, Edgar Froese. And of course, they would, and of course, if you know your, you know, eighties films, you know that they did soundtracks to films such as Thief. And Thief, such a great film. Great, great, such a great film. They don't make films like that no more. You know, those those really stylish, minimalistic film noir films. They just don't. Incredible film, Thief, with James Caan. Brilliant. If you've never seen Thief, watch it. Death, a death, definitely a clear... Inspiration for Drive, for sure. You know, brilliant. Michael Mann, just brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant film. And it's just, again, it's just, it's just such a great soundtrack. It's like beat scene. It just, it just sounds so melancholic, but, but, but it lifts you at the same time. It's weird. It has that contracting. It gives you a contrasting feel when you listen to it. You know, I would love that song to be played at my funeral. Just absolutely brilliant, and it, and it, and it's used really well. 
that particular music piece in the film when he's on when he's on the beach and he's like, oh, I'm retired now. I'm retired now from from Jewel Thief and I'm retired now. And it just it just works so well. It's just just oh, it just complete complete the sound the, the music completely adds adds to the atmosphere of the film. You know, I just I just miss synthesizers in soundtracks they just do you know because it's all all it is now it's just all the soundtrack does all the soundtracks do now in films they just they're just there didn't they they're just in the background they just means they may as well be used in a lift it doesn't it, it doesn't add to the film it doesn't add to the it doesn't add to the characters at all you know soundtracks back then they would add atmosphere to the to the film and they add to the characters as well you know you listen to um tony's theme from scarface it just it just completely adds to the character it just adds to the, the to the absolute manic madness of tony mantani it just does but you know thief is just again great soundtrack great film and he did and he did the soundtrack to um they did the soundtrack to, um, I think it was Sorcerer and Near Dark as well, which is a, a great fucking vampire film. Really underrated that film is. So yeah, they do soundtracks to films. Just, you know, just, just absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Tangerine Dream. Just absolutely brilliant. You know, and I think if you're going to listen to Tangerine Dream, I would start with um, I would start I would start with their soundtracks. Seriously, I would start with this. It's just it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You know, brilliant Tangerine Dream, and of course. You had a lot of the uh, musicians from Tangerine Dream do solo careers as well. So guys like Klaus Schultz, just again, he, again, his sound is very, very hypnotic. You know, very, 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 very sort of. Um, very psychedelic very trippy synth synth symphedelic that's a good that's a good word to describe the sound symphedelic you've heard of psychedelic symphedelic brilliant close shots brilliant he was all and he was also in a band called ashra temple which is, again very 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 um very space rock sort of sound. Very, very, very similar to um, Hawkwind. Very similar to Hawkwind. Close Schultz. And, of course, Peter Bowman. Peter Bowman. Romance 76. Again, it's just... Again, brilliant. Just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Sort of, again, sort of like... Very sort of like early synth pop. Very early, very early synth. But it's like the one track in your romance. It sounds to me. It sounds like a precursor to New Order's Your Silent Face. It just does to me. Just incredible. And, and of course, Joy Division, New Order were big fans of um, the Cosmic music. They loved. They loved Noi and Kraftwerk. They loved them. You know. And um, so yeah, he was part of the Berlin School of Cosmic Shoes. Yeah, so they'd be so, so yeah, it'd be like it wasn't really a move. Well, people say a lot of people would say it wasn't a movement, but it was a movement in a way. It's like we we we, we British we we lumped all the, the German bands together as crate rock. I think John Peel. I think. John Peel turned, turned the, the phrase crate rock 
to describe all these bands coming out of Germany in the 70s. Yeah, I know, it's not the greatest, not exactly the greatest term, to be honest, but I think it was John Bios or some British DJ or British music magazine coined the term great rock. And and, and uh, Tangerine Dream, bands like Tangerine Dream and, and oh, it's like Peter Bowman, they were part of the Berlin School. Whatever that meant, you know, but but they but they was well, but they were different scenes in Germany. It was just different scenes, so it'd be like so in Berlin you had Tangerine Dream with their really hypnotic sound. Dusseldorf you'd have Neu and Kraftwerk with a craft with a very mechanical. Um, sound, you know, Noi with a very a, a, a cost con, contrasting style of very abrasive, punky yet soft melodic sound. And of course, Cologne with Can, and of course, um, oh, we were folks from. Faust, I can't remember where Faust are from, but yeah, you had Faust using using chainsaws and combined arms to, to create a, an authentic industrial sound before industrial was was even around. Really, I mean, you know, just just incredible. So yeah, Tangerine Dream, and of course, Ashra Temple, and this is one of their albums, Ashra. Which is more, it's more of a, it's more of a solo um, album by Manuel Gotchin, you know. It's more of a solo album. And the sound on here, it's very, in many ways, it, it sort of um, predates 90s trance music. I mean, this was made in about 70... 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. 77. It's made in 1977 and it sounds like an, it sounds like trance music. It sounds like 90s trance music. It's just absolutely incredible. And again with a lot of the German and again with a lot of the German bands, there's not a lot of vocals. So if you like if you like vocals, it's not the music for you. It's very instrumental heavy a lot of the music. So yeah, Man so yeah, Ashra, Manuel Gotchin, brilliant. It's brilliant. So we talked about Tangerine Dream, Ashra Temple. Next band we're going to look at, if I get my shit together, is... Get it all fucking sorted out. Is... Can... Which stands for communism, anarchism, nihilism. So yeah, can from Cologne. So what can we tell you about can? I mean, can. Oh my God, can. Probably one of my. Definitely one of my favourite uh, German bands, for sure. I mean, just absolutely incredible can. Just. Oh. I remember I remember hearing them in college when I was about sixteen, Mushroom, and it, the song Mushroom, and it just fucking blew my fucking mind. And I thought these these guys sound like aliens from another planet. It just it just absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. I mean, Damo Suzuki, but Damo Suzuki's vocal style is like I can't stand a fucking really singing about but it just sounds so awesome it's like he doesn't he doesn't really sing really his style is he sort of he sort of uses his voice as another and as another kind of instrument you know he, he, he will you know he has like a in many ways sort of like his, his own he, he sort of does his own interpretation of yodeling particularly on the song hallelujah 
you know, just, just, just incredible, just incredible, you know. And they, they, they started out in the late sixties. I mean, it was sixty-eight. And there's a great book. Oh, see that book? Because I got a book on Tom. I can fucking find it. Oh, is that book right? Yeah. This is a great, great book that's been released this year, and it's about Can. All gates open, and and it, and it tells it tells you about the story about the band, and it's two books. First book is about the about the band Can, and the second is about um, it's like a conversation with Herman Schmidt, the keyboard player. And I'm trying to. Well, I've read most of it. Let's see if I have any good pictures. Of um, the band, so, yeah, um, yeah, that's the terrible. Yeah, that's the keyboard player, Herman Schmidt. Do you any pictures of the band together? Let's have a look. Oh, is it? Mm. Picture of the band. Yeah, that's uh, Michael. Uh, oh, I can't say his last name. Sorry, Herman Schmidt, Olga Zuke, and Jackie Lieberzeit. Just yeah, it's a great book, really good book. So yeah, can just really good. I mean, just absolutely brilliant. You know, so, you know, great, great, great album, really good album. So, uh, this is their second album, and it's music, and it's music from films, because he composed film music as well. It's brilliant. Oh, guys, okay, brilliant, just, oh, just brilliant. And this is the, f and this is the first album I heard by Can. Tego Mago. You know, I, I pretty much, fucking wore out the CD on that. The CD is fucking scratched to shit. You know, when I when I got it, I just could not stop listening. I just couldn't stop listening to it. It was so captivating, the sound. Just nothing I never... There was like nothing I ever heard before. You know, it was like... You know, I thought I knew music. Like, you know, you know, you're like at 16. You think you know, you think you know fucking everything, don't you, about things and music. And when I heard Can, I thought... I've just been transported into another musical dimension. Just incredible. Tegel Mago, it's just brilliant. Hallelujah. The song is just absolutely, it's just, just 18 minutes of just, it's just absolutely brilliant. Funk, really funk, it's like a really funky, funky, sort of like a funky, Funky, trancy, James Brown on acid track. It's just brilliant. I mean, Jackie Lieberzeit, the drummer, he's my favourite drummer of all time. I mean, that that guy. People talk about drum machines. That guy is the human drum machine. He is. He's the, he was. He was a human drum machine. Just incredible. The drums on Hallelujah is just absolutely, absolutely incredible. You know, I mean, I mean, that guy studied jazz. He, that guy studied jazz for years. You know, Jackie Lee was like, Holger okay. the bass player, he studied with Karl Heinz Stockhausen. You know, same with Herman Schmidt, he studied with Karl Heinz Stockhausen. So these guys were not, you know, they were the fucking real deal. You know? Brilliant. Tego Mago. Just, it's one of my favourite albums of all time. You know? And side two of this. Could, could could be easily be used in a horror movie. It's so fucking creepy. You know, it's just it's it's like a it's like a a, a really it's it's like a it's like a creepy sound collage that you would use that you would use that that you that you could use in a horror film. I remember playing. I remember one time oh, I was at home and I had the windows open. 
and the accuser was screeching inside going <laughs> and I'm like oh shut the fuck up you're annoying me bloody kids so I put Sai to a Tego Mago and they were like ah and he ran away <laughs> so yeah I must have done something right there so yeah oh brilliant brilliant Tego Mago and of course Khan had various amount of singers as well the first singer was um was an african-american called malcolm mooney monster movie great album you know and that's where primal screen got the lines from i was blind now i could see you made a believer in me from the song you do right malcolm mooney brilliant brilliant but he didn't last he didn't last that long though apparently he had a break apparently he had a breakdown on stage he had a brief so he kept repeat he kept repeating the song Upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs and he was and then and then he just dis disappeared and went back to America. And then of course Al Holga Suzuki met uh met Damo Suzuki Buskin and they had Damo for about four albums. Soundtracks Tego Mago and, and this album and, and future days. So yeah, this is the, and again this is this is another this is another great album as well. You know, absolutely brilliant, brilliant album. And the drums on this on the and the drums on this one. If you if you speeded them up, it sounds like early drum and bass. You know, particularly on I'm So Green. If you if you speed the drums on that, it just sounds like early drum and bass, you know. And one of the songs, Vitamin C was used in, um, uh, what's that film? Back in Phoenix's uh, Inherent Vice, Vitamin C is used in that. And compared to Tego Mago, it's a, it's a much, um, it's a m much more softer album, less, less abrasive. Less, yeah, it's a lot, it's, Less abrasive, but it's still a still a great album though. Just brilliant. Oh, he's a oh, he's a great picture, Damo. You know, ain't got no time for Western medicine. I am Damo, so it's okay. So yeah, can big influence on post punk. You know, you know Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten swears by these guys. So Marky Smith. You know, the four big fans of Can. You know, he's done that song, I Am Daniel Suzuki. Just, you know, big influence. Big influence on on um, um, dance music as well. You know, you listen to the song I Want More. You know, it, it, sound, it, it sounds like... A, it sounds like a precursor to uh, I Feel Love by Donna Summer. You know, and they, and they, impede, and they impede on top of the pops with that one. I want more. Got to the top 30. Because Noel Edmonds introduced him. He said, this is a band from Germany. They called Can. Can they make it to the top 10? Ho, 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 ho. And I'm thinking, uh, no, what a fucking terrible joke. Dear me. Terrible joke. So Can just, oh, absolutely brilliant, you know. Again, this is one of the this is one of their later albums about Damo. Um, it's not their probably not their best album, but I do like the sort of like the Latin sort of like jazz Latin jazzy rock style on it. It's pretty pretty interesting. Not their best album because can they can they would just do so many different styles. You know, none, none of their albums, none, none of their albums sound the same. They just do different style each, each, uh, each time. And of course, and of course, people, and of course, people talk about um, hip hop being the first one to sample. No, whole guys who okay. was doing sampling years before hip hop. You know, you listen to you listen to um, Holgazuke solo stuff off mo movies. Persian Love is a sample of an old um, Iranian song. 
It's just absolutely brilliant. His, his, his solo stuff is just brilliant. The bass player out of candy stuff is just so brilliant. Cool in the pool. Really wacky synth pop number. And I'm like, oh, I should be. <laughs> let's get hot on the dancing spot. Oh, let's get cool in the pool. Oh, let's get cool in the pool. Yeah, oh god. I, re I remember, um. God, I remember. <laughs> I remember when I used to go to Newport Mind, like the mental health charity, and you do, when I was doing paintings and drawings. And I remember drawing. I remember drawing this. And, and the German, and the German, um. Super well, I say supervisor, well, well, you know, supervising the group. She was like, "Oh, you like Can? I like Can too. I got, I got Holger Zucker's movie solo. I bring it in next week." And I remember, and I remember she brought it in for for us. All right, this is Holger Zucker's movies. I'm going to play. It's cool in the pool. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she started playing. And everyone was like. What the fucking hell is this? And I'm dancing, I'm going, Oh, let's get cool in the pool. Oh, let's get cool in the pool. And I'm like, and they're like, oh my fucking God. Jonathan, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. So yeah, oh, just absolutely brilliant. Whole guy's okay, genius. No, absolute, absolute genius. And he, and he would, one of the ones he just he would cut a lot of the the track, edit the tracks, because a lot of Cannon's tracks are so fucking long, it's unreal. But he would do he would do a lot of that. He was he, you know he was a craft he was a craft a craftsman. He was absolute craftsman, you know. Movies great, you know, great album. And Jackie Lieber's like Phantom Man is brilliant as well. You know that's that's that's. You know, some of the stuff he did there is brilliant as well. Like Can, oh, just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I might, yeah, I might do it into two parts. So we talked about Tangerine Dream, Ashra Temple, Can. That's good. Oh, I forgot to show you this. Singles, brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, so yeah, that was part one, part two. So thanks for watching. See you in the next part. Wunderbar, danke.